let's look at the math. So using the Schrodinger equation to actually look, plug in the different values of potential to understand the math, the differential equations we're going to get for inside and outside the well. So in the infinite well sense, we only really had to worry about inside the well. So when I talk about inside the well, I mean here, outside the well, here, and there. So in the case of inside the well, we plug in v equals zero, the potential term drops out, and we're left with this equation. That's actually the same differential equation that we in fact had for the infinite well. So this is important. There's already videos that go through how do we solve this differential equation for the infinite well. You get sine and cosine or complex exponentials, however you want to write it. And the key is same equation, same solution. And that's why, again, these solutions look really similar. Same differential equation, same functional form. So now what we have to focus on is actually what's happening outside the well, so these two regions. So now this potential term doesn't go away. The good news is it's not a function of x, it's a constant. And the key is that we're not talking about all values of x, we're only talking about a certain region of x now. So we get to plug in this value and we're again asking the question, what is the functional form of these energy eigenstates? So we can do a little bit of rearranging. So we want to basically have a derivative or a relationship relating the derivative of this wave function to itself, that differential equation that will allow us to really figure out what the form is. So now one way to do this is to distribute and then rearrange. So I'm going to leave initially the second derivative and I'm going to just leave it as phi for the simplicity of writing it. And I'm going to move this over here. So this becomes e minus v naught and technically this should have been, sorry, en times phi. So now what we can do is rearrange a little bit more and also keep in mind that when we're talking about a bound state, right? So it's like this is E1 and up here is V0. So if I have E minus V for a bound state, that is in fact going to be a negative number, okay? So, so this, is, this is kind of important. So let's say that since that for a bound state, that's going to be a negative number. Let's say that E minus V naught for now is going to be equal to negative delta. So this then becomes a number which is greater than zero, okay? So when I have this, I can rearrange as my second derivative of my wave function with respect to position is equal now to 2m over h bar squared with a minus sign and I said that e minus v naught is going to become negative delta phi. So the reason I explicitly did this this substitution right now is that you're able to see that oh in fact I have a negative number here right negative times a positive number and a negative there so those cancel. So I'm left with my second derivative of my wave function is equal to, and, and for the sake of simplicity, let's just say, let's call this q squared. So now the key is when I call it q squared, that kind of implies that it's a positive number. And that's going to work because m is a positive number, h bar is a positive number, and we've said that delta for the bound states, which is what we're doing right now, is a positive number. Cool. So I rewrite this as q squared, and you can say, well, how do I know it should be q squared and not q? You can call it q, just the math, later you'll have a square root. I happen to know where we're going, so I write it this way. So now we have our differential equation in a fairly simple form. So again, if differential equations are new to you, you might just find it a little bit easier to simplify this and, and write it in different letters. This is just saying, that there's some function f, which is going to be a function of position, which when you take its second derivative, you get some constant squared, might be complex, but don't worry too much about that, times the function itself. What function is this? Well, if you've watched some of those Math Basic videos, I go through some of the simplest cases, and this is one of them. Again, there's not that many situations we're going to see in quantum mechanics. The situation that would do that 
is when you have an exponential of q to the x, right? So if you take the derivative once, you get q. You take the direct derivative second time, you get q squared. Now remember, there needs to be a coefficient out front. And that this could actually be kind of positive or minus. So we can write this as positive or minus, or a better way to do it is to think about this as a e to the positive qx plus b e to the negative qx. And if you think, oh, that becomes sine and cosine. No, it doesn't. These are real. They're not complex, right? That there's no reason to believe that when you square q, you get a negative number, right? So again, you should always think, oh, maybe it's complex. But in this case, when we've said, okay, we have a negative real number, this, this was all positive. So now we can take this and what we can say is outside the well, we have now found that our phi of n, right, so remember that we're going to index them, is going to be equal to a e to the positive q x, and I'm going to put a little n there because these q are going to relate to what our n is, plus b e to the minus q n x. So the key is that we also know what q is actually, right? So q is going to be equal to the square root, and I'll write this out a little bit, so we have 2m over h bar squared, and then we had that, that delta. But remember that delta, or negative delta, so negative delta was this, so delta is just the inverse of that, is v naught minus e. So how does this become qn? Well, keep in mind that our, en our energies are going to be quantized. So our qn up here is this complicated thing, and we get quantized possibilities for q because we expect that our energies are going to be quantized. So we are not done yet. I'm going to, to stop this video right now based on just the amount of space left on the board. But the key is to always remember we are plugging in a specific value for v. From this differential equation, we can simplify it just to see more clearly what the functional form of the answer is. Because it's a second order differential equation, i.e. there's a second derivative, I know that we actually need two separate solutions. The one is positive, the other one is negative. So I have those here. So right now, we still don't know what a and b is. And we don't yet have the relationship for how this is quantized. We're not done. What haven't we used yet? We haven't used the boundary conditions. So this is just for the outside. On the inside, we have a different differential equation defining what those solutions look like, and then we have to combine this all together. So a separate video will go through the boundary conditions and how we combine this, um, but this is a much harder problem in the end than the, in, than the infinite well was. But in the infinite well, we also solved the differential equation. We also used boundary conditions, but those things were a lot simpler and things became zero. They're not going to become zero now. So keep watching the series of videos to see more of how this math.